Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube that's gripping with that BDE, that's right, Big Dad Energy! If you've ever made your children rage quit at Mario Kart, then go ahead and hit that like button. They really didn't know who they were messing with. I'm David, and today I get to tell you about the Rock Island RIA 5.0. Now, I'm not exactly sure whether it's RIA 5.0 or RIA 5.0. I'm just gonna go with RIA because somebody who grew up watching Beavis and Butthead, RIA would be a really unfortunate name. So the 5.0 is a really interesting gun. It's almost like a concept gun. They only had an initial offering of 300 units of iron sight, 300 units of optic only. And I've been trying to buy one and have been hideously unsuccessful. So, so Subscriber reached out last weekend. I got to shoot the guns. So this is very much a first impression style video. The gun is very interesting. Like it's not so much that it's a, yeah, this is way better. This is the way forward, but it's like, this is a completely different concept on how handguns work and is worth spending more time with because shooting it is very, very weird. That's strange. It's very different from anything else I've shot. It feels like it's going high, like I can feel the... Huh, let's see, let's put a better... Put more shoulder into it. And there's a number of different factors on why the gun is so weird. The number one most obvious is that if you know much about how handguns operate, they typically use a Browning modified tilt lock style design where the locking block is right in front of the chamber. So when you fire the gun, it feels like it just lifts up from the muzzle, like that's where the force feels like it comes from. And then it goes, you know, does whatever recoil is going to do. Now the 5.0 is kind of weird because the locking block is right at the tip of the muzzle. And the way it works is the guide rod kind of moves forward upon ignition, which causes the locking block to drop out and then causes the slide to unlock and go to the rear. So you feel this weird like bump down at the muzzle before the lift and it's just, it's very, very strange. The design for the gun feels like it took like all of the prevalent handgun design and just kind of slapped them all together and that's where the gun lands. So you took the internal slide rails of the CZ-75 and put those bad boys on there. You took this brand new action type, which is the innovative bit. Oh, and by the way, there's a square barrel. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that. And then you made it a hammer fire gun with a modular grip and it's just like, it's it's so much extra. It's just, a, it's a lot to process. So while the gun is a hammer fired gun, it has an internal hammer. It, feels more like a striker gun in hand. And that's largely due to how they sculpted the back of the grip. The grip is very broad across the back and you really kind of have to get the pressure from your fingers sort of dialed in in the same direction as the trigger in order to stabilize the gun in recoil. And when we talk about shooting, Again, it's it's very weird. As mentioned, the grip is modular, kind of like in the same way a 2011 grip is modular, like there's the frame part of the gun and then the grip kind of bolts onto it at the bottom. So I'm hopeful that this will lead to development in other grip type options. Maybe there's aluminum grips, steel grips, whatever it is into the future, that there are different choices there that perhaps get better ergonomics because the ergonomics on the grip weren't particularly amazing. The textures weren't amazing. The geometry of the grip and how it kind of seats in your hand. I mean, it's good, but it's not great. Kind of at that price point, you're kind of expecting a lot once you get into the four digits for a pistol. And don't hear me say that and say that it's not a four digit pistol because the concept is so new, novel, unique that, I mean, there's not really another one like it out there. The way that the trigger kind of comes together and now the, in the TFB TV interview, they say they initially developed this gun with a trigger pull weight of about two pounds, then realized they couldn't go to market with a two pound trigger on a gun that has no manual safety. So they used spring weight to increase the trigger pull to about five pounds. I didn't get to put a trigger pull gauge on this gun, but I would guess that it was about a five pound trigger. But what's interesting is because the trigger is completely uniform from the beginning of the pull all the way to the release, because you're overcoming five pounds of spring weight, you don't really feel the sear and hammer engagement at the rear of the trigger stroke. So it's almost like there's no wall. And the trigger stroke is a little bit long. When shooting at speed, it took me a minute to understand exactly how I needed to pull the trigger. So the, the ergonomics of the trigger system aren't the most intuitive to get the straight to the rear trigger press. That said, kind of figuring it out. 
Once I did figure out how to pull the trigger and how to stabilize the gun and recoil, I was rewarded. The grip texture is a polymer grip and it's accomplished via the fissuring that is pretty common on all of the striker fired plastic gripped pistols out there. The frame is aluminum and now they say on the website it weighs about 40 ounces. I would not have guessed it weighed that much just feeling it in hand. It felt lighter to me than that and the balance was decent on it. It's not as nose heavy as the gun actually looks so it is actually pretty well balanced but they used Cerakote on this and the gun that I was shooting had 400 rounds from the owner. We put about 200 rounds on it that day and the Cerakote was doing what Cerakote does which is wearing out in the contact and rub points. The aesthetics of the pistol because of the slide and frame design is kind of boxy, kind of basic. It kind of looks like a CZ and a Glock had a baby. The initial pistols do come with this amazing range bag and three magazines. The magazines are based off of a 92 magazine mag tube. The finish on the magazines was like a blued type finish which is not the best finish for a magazine those it looked like it would rust although it hadn't yet I got to shoot the optic only version which comes with a Seymour Systems RTS 2 I like the Seymour site I think it's a good site but there was no iron sights on it no way to bring it back to an iron sight pistol some people aren't gonna like that I personally didn't care I think it's fine the shooting the gun as I mentioned was kind of weird like the way that the recoil is working with this with the blocking block at the front it's just a very different sensation for how the gun is recoiling versus a traditional gun like you're used to shooting. It's kind of a medium bore axis height and for the bros who say bore axis doesn't matter, you don't get to overcome physics because you can mitigate something with technique. It's still going to lift and return at a higher angle than something with a low bore axis, but it's not going to dump as much energy into your arms. So that all said, the gun was very pleasant to shoot. The actual perceived recoil, the hit in the arms, if you will, due to how it's doing whatever it does is, I would say it is softer feeling, but it's not like an advantage that you can exploit. They're kind of positioning this as a competition pistol. First of all, you can't use this pistol in the most prevalent divisions in competition. They have production limits. There's only 600 of these units. There are production requirements and lists like USPSA. Eventually it's gonna get there, but right now you can only use it in like limited IDPA ESP or IDPA carry optics. And should it be a competition gun? Right now I'd say probably not because you're gonna give up some of the race gun trim stuff like mag wells, additional magazines, and just the stuff that you kind of need to make a gun race. It's not there yet. They uh, kind of brought this out at shot. There's no holster support available for it. So it's a really cool concept gun, but most people are probably going to be mounting flashlights and using flashlight holsters to get this thing into action, at least initially. I was very pleased once I did kind of figure out how to grip the gun and how to stabilize it that I was able to return it to zero pretty good. But as I mentioned, the ergonomics on the grip do make it kind of shift around in your hand where you do have to spend some time sort of nuancing your grip in order to stabilize it because the grip based on the geometry alone doesn't kind of seat itself in your grip like most hammer fire guns do. That's why CZs are such a revelation to many people is because usually the person who's picking up a CZ hasn't shot a hammer fired gun before. So they kind of come to a natural point around the back of the hammer so it seats in the V of your hand really really nicely so you're able to stabilize the gun throughout the trigger press which is why people think those guns are really accurate. It's the same thing with 1911s. This gun doesn't have that profile in the grip so you're gonna have this kind of broad back strap that you have to sort of press into your palm and then like use muscles to stabilize because the geometry is not helping you. But one thing I did notice as I was shooting the gun is that I really liked it. Like I wanted to shoot it more. I eventually had to just stop loading the magazines. Like, okay, there's probably enough footage because I did like how it was shooting. It was something so new and so novel that I wanted to keep shooting it more. So I think some of the mystique around this pistol is largely hype. Like the fact you can't get them. They've got an entirely new locking system. They've got a square barrel and you know, all this other stuff. So there very well may be something there with this new design. It wasn't immediately obvious to me, but it had me intrigued enough to where I'm still going to try and buy one of these things and spend more time with it and do a proper review. Now that said, the gun wasn't completely without hiccups and there were two documented failures when I was shooting the gun. The first was a round went into the chamber, skipping the extractor. Oh, what happened there? It's not a backup battery. Round skip the ejector claw. This particular batch of ammo that I bought is certified remanufactured and they, it feels like they did something wrong with their brass. I'm having issues with it in other guns. It could be an ammo problem. I'm not sure it was the gun. So we'll call that ammo for now and not credit that to the gun. There was one light strike. 
light strike? It is a light strike. But the owner mentioned that he had had one other light strike in the first 400 rounds he'd put through it. Now that said, this owner over oiled the gun to the point where it potentially was causing issues with the ignition. When the pistol showed up to the range, it was largely clean, kind of dripping with oil. And by the time I finished shooting it, there was a sheen of oil on the lens of the optic and the optic had actually, the screws had started to back out. Now that could mean that they didn't lock tight the screws at the factory but it could also mean that using too generous amounts of solvent or potentially oil made the Loctite break down and allowed the screws to walk out. It's just, there's a right amount of oil to put on your pistols, guys, and dripping with oil isn't necessarily the right solution. One lube that I've had great success with because it deposits itself onto the metal and kind of reduces the friction coefficient and doesn't just drip oil all over the place is Accuracy Oil by Modern Spartan Systems. It's what I use in my open guns. I've got a link and a code in the description where you can save some money there. So that is my really scattered brain kind of review on the gun. Like I, I like the gun, I really do. And I'm still gonna buy one of these things because I think it's significant in the same way like the Hudson H9 was significant, except for it's executed way better than the Hudson H9. Like the Hudson H9 was a concept gun that was just implemented poorly. The sights were bad, the barrels were bad. You know, the guns had all kinds of issues. I don't see that happening with this Rock Island. My biggest criticism about it, despite the premium range bag, is just the small attention to detail type stuff like the Cerakote being used, the magazines not having the anti-friction coating. Those kinds of details feel like misses to where it feels like a less expensive gun than a $1,000 or $1,200 gun, but it's not enough to scare me off. I'm still gonna get one of these guns because I'm still really, really curious about it to see where this goes. And this may not be the final iteration. It may continue to evolve and like modern handguns may, as a result, move in this direction. I have no idea. It could just be a blip on the radar and I'm like, hey, wasn't that really neat? I have no idea. All I do know is that it was interesting enough to where I'm willing to open up my wallet and try and buy one. So that's the Rock Island Armory RIA 5.0. Sound off in the comments with questions. I appreciate you guys. Catch you on the next one.